we are having our genetics tampered with. The system that we live in, ladies and gentlemen, is a giant test. They are testing you. They are not only testing your intelligence level, but they are also testing your genetics. They are trying to see what happens to human beings in the long run, eating all of this processed garbage, hybridized, genetically engineered crap, this slop food, this slave food. Typical people in the United States and worldwide eat an amalgam of processed foods, a mixture. And those processed foods themselves are an amalgam, a mixture of different fortified synthetic vitamins. There's metal and iron mixed into a lot of the processed foods and vegetable oils and artificial dyes and colors and preservatives and there's pesticides, etc. in these foods. They are testing us. They are seeing what these foods do to us in the long run. We are like Pottinger's cats. But Pottinger's study was a lot different. However, there's some similarities to what's going on to humans in this world. Food, we are wiping ourselves out. And if you want an interesting read, a nice little book of about 135 pages called Pottinger's Cats. It's a study that was done by a famous medical doctor named Francis Marion Pottinger, where he fed some cats a raw food diet, their normal diet, and he fed some cats cooked meat and various grades of pasteurized milk and by the fourth generation, they were extinct. And in the end of the book, he makes a nice, interesting little statement. I see similar findings in my human patients. One of the things that he saw was that as we breed generation to generation and get more and more unhealthy, it's harder and harder to differentiate men, young men from young women. At the end of his book, and this is back in the late 40s, he shows pictures of, I believe they're either high school or college students stripped naked facing a wall and he asked, he asked medical doctors in large audiences everywhere he gave lectures to try to identify which were the males and which were the females and if I remember the statistic correctly about 90% of medical doctors could not tell the difference between the males and the females and then he showed clearly that the same thing happened with his cats as they got more and more unhealthy from eating cooked foods and processed foods that they, you could not differentiate the males from the females. You had to pick, physically pick them up and look at their genitals to see if it was a cat, a male or a female cat, which is not necessary with a healthy cat. You can easily tell a male from a female if you know what you're looking at. So what, what a Western Price show, he showed that when natives were exposed to white man's food, which is processed sugar, processed flowers, uh, table salt, and pasteurized dairy, and back then it wasn't so much pasteurized dairy, it was mostly sugar and flour that was doing this. He showed, with, this is first generation exposure. So these are people that were exposed to white men's food, most of which was brought in by trappers, by the way. They are testing to see what happens when we are exposed to all these metals, electromagnetic food, or uh, fields, and all the crap in the food. How can you not see this? We are all in a survival fucking lifestyle where again it's all about the bills it's all about all of this nonsense we can never focus on ourselves and our own inner healing because we're too stressed out busy and have way too many obligations this is a prison system they are testing your genetics ladies and gentlemen they are testing your intelligence too because if they think that if you're too if you're so dumb that you'll just throw this shot this shit into your mouth then you deserve the ramifications of what, what comes from that. And I hate to say that, but that's the absolute undeniable truth, folks. So, I've said this a million times, and I'm going to continue to preach this same message. We are currently a domesticated creature living in a false environment. We've been taken out of nature, which is our real environment, and we've been put in this stack-and-pack lifestyle where we have neighbors right next to us, there's cars everywhere, there's, all the houses are painted with toxic paint. You see multiple people on a daily basis, you have no privacy. I keep getting these goddamn notifications. You have no privacy. It's insanity. 
We come into this world, the birth certificate gets put into the database, and right when that happens, you have to start playing by the system's rules. That's when you start getting your injections and all of your unnecessary nonsense, folks, all of the unnecessary medical treatments, etc. And I'm just sharing my opinions with you, but my God. I've had states of consciousness, or I've experienced states of consciousness, where I was allowed to see past my perceptual blinders, and I know for a fact that what we are currently experiencing here in this world is less than 1% of our full potential. In the New World Order, whatever you want to call it, this consortium of evil that runs the show, that runs the agriculture and everything, they want to keep you enslaved, and they want you to basically live out a short life here and die off. Ladies and gentlemen, the people that run the show are master psychologists, they're master chemists, etc. They know how your body works, they know exactly what they're doing when they fill all the foods with the vegetable oils and all the synthetics, etc. They know the effect on human health in the long run. There is no denying this. The US Public Health Department said that in 1976 that only one and a half percent of all Americans were actually healthy. Again, in 1976, the US Public Health Department said that only one and a half percent of all Americans were actually healthy. Now we're here in 2021 and people consume more shit than ever before. So you might wanna do an inventory on what you eat. You might wanna do an inventory on what you think, ladies and gentlemen, because if you think that there isn't a warfare going on within your genetics, you are a fool. And you've placed too much faith in this system. The system is not here to care for you, folks. It's here to distract you into your own death, into your own demise. We are not designed to only live to 80, to 90, to 100. We're supposed to live to 140 beyond and beyond. Well, I met a tribe in the uh, Philippines uh, a little over a year ago, and uh, they only eat mainly two foods. And they live to 140s, and they're completely healthy, and they have all their teeth up until the day they die. Some of them will gain a second, I mean a third set in, in their 90s, but most of them go through their whole life on the one set of teeth from the age of seven all the way through. They mainly two foods, fish, raw fish, and raw coconut. Not coconut cream, but they actually eat the coconut meat. Uh, a male will eat sometimes a whole coconut a day, and the females will eat about a half a coconut a day. So you're looking at about a cup, you know, uh, for the men, uh, maybe a cup and a half, cup and three quarters of women, about a cup of, of coconut meat a day. That doesn't mean young coconut, it means mature coconut. And then you know, somewhere anywhere around a pound of fish a day. Um, they once in a while will eat a banana, a semi-ripe banana or an unripe mango. But that may be three a week per person, and that's it, or maybe none at all. But they're living on two foods. How could you translate civilized, so to speak, society, like here in L.A.? I would say if you will, I mainly eat uh, eggs, dairy, and meat. Basically, that's all I eat. I'll eat one fruit a day sometimes. <laughs> But I live on, you know, the dairy, uh, dairy, eggs, and meat. That's the all I eat. Thanks. In my opinion, we can achieve some incredible things with this body and this mind. When our spirit that is anchored in our body becomes aware of itself and we reawaken the Kundalini, we are being turned off, ladies and gentlemen, and you are participating with it. This, this lifestyle where we all have these fucking televisions in our homes and all this artificial lighting and all the toxic paint in the refrigerators and all this nonsense, this is a convenient distraction to take you out of nature, which is your real environment, where everything is cared for, everything is taken care of, care of, everything is free. You just have to work for it. This is a mad, mad world, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to start waking up. It's going to take some real digging because most of you guys have way too much faith in the system. It's beyond the, 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 you know, oh, just eat some foods and you'll snap out of your trance. It's beyond that. You've got to do some digging because your site, your antennas, your metaphysical antennas should be going off the chart right now, folks. If you think that this world is normal, if you think that what's going on in this world is normal, 
If you think that what's going on in these stores and just, just outside in general, going around and looking at the architecture of the matrix, if you think that this is normal, there's a good chance that you've put way too much faith in the system. You fell for the distractions. So I would get the minerals back into your system, the fat soluble vitamins. I would get grounded. I'd get better sleep, block the blue light and start snapping out of your trance, folks. New information from the Environmental Working Group is shedding light on just how much of the herbicide glyphosate is found in popular brains. RT Sarah Montes de Oca has that story, plus how much the EPA has changed their guidelines over time. So, Sarah, I mean, you've been following this story closely since the EWG's report and its criticism. So, what's the latest? So, the EWG has received a lot of criticism, especially from concerned parents as well, asking, what do we do? Uh, do we remove uh, cereals altogether from our kids' breakfast tables? So the EWG really wants to address these concerns. Uh, the interesting part is that they mentioned that the EPA's glyphosate risk levels have changed over the years. Um, the, they say the EPA's current legal limit for glyphosate on oats and many other grains is 30 parts per million or ppm, but just a few years ago it was 300 times lower, only 0.1 parts per million. So this means that the levels have changed. Uh, we already know that glyphosate has been used since 1974. And, and just to kind of give you an idea, um, the overall, overall amount of glyphosate being sprayed uh, around the U.S. in pounds in 1974, it went from 1,400 to 276, 425 pounds. And that's in 2014, which is the last year we, we have that's been recorded. So that in agriculture alone, it went from 800 pounds to almost 250,000 pounds, which is a huge increase. Um, to put this a little bit into perspective, the EWG mentioned um, the risk levels change. So soybeans, for example, uh, it went from 15 to about 100. And remember, this is in parts per million. Um, and oats went from 0.1 to 30 in 2015. And in wheat, which contains grains, straw, and edible beans, that change stands out most uh, at straw. That went from 0.1 to 100 parts per million. So glyphosate, you know, is a huge source for farmers. They heavily rely on glyphosate. Um, and the amount that's used, like you can see, has increased because it, it really is uh, a good source for them to help in the weed killer, but it's affecting our foods. Certainly is, and, and you mentioned the parents, the concerned parents, what are their options going forward now? So the EWG has said there's no need to completely remove cereals from your shelves. This is obviously a very common go-to, but they are suggesting to look for healthier options, look for organic products. Well, or, these organic products aren't directly sprayed, and the EWG report did test some organic cereals and oats, and while they did find traces of glyphosate, they say that those levels are far lower, so it is a healthier option for, for these kids. It's unfortunate that still these organic products are even getting glyphosate on them in the first place, but they are healthier options and a healthier alternative. Wonderful to know. Thank you so much, Sarah Montes de Oca. We really appreciate your insight. I wanted to personally thank you for watching my videos and contributing to the growth of my channel. I could not do this without you, and your interest in my content is truly what motivates me and fuels my passion for making these videos and spreading my message. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to remind you that this channel is a free educational tool that is listener supported, and if you would like to donate to my channel and donate to my cause, help make my life a little bit easier and help keep the lights on around here, you can do so by checking out the links in the description box below. There's a handful of not only ways to donate to my channel, but I also have links to different websites and different videos of mine, as well as my Amazon store, where you can check out a handful, a plethora of different health-related products that I use and recommend. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for your continued interest in my message, and until next time, peace be with you all.